University of Wisconsin is certainly dominated today by female athletes, but that wasn't always the case. No, the passage of Title IX in 1972, 50 years ago now, opened the doors and Kit Saunders Nordine led the way. She was the first director of women's athletics in UW history. Her incredible story and legacy is the subject of a new book by columnist Doug Moe. It's called The Right Thing to Do, Kit Saunders Nordine and the Rise of Women's Intercollegiate Athlete Athletics at Wisconsin and B. Beyond, and Doug joins us again. Doug, Welcome. Great to see it's been you. a couple of years. I think, since great great here to see first. you guys. Gra yeah. Congratulations. Still typing. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> on the book. I think for for female athletes on campus today, if you told them what it was like prior to 1972, I don't think they'd believe you. Well, it's funny because some of the athletes from that era that I interviewed now have daughters <laughs> who are athletes, and they tell them, you know, we had to trade uniforms because between volleyball and basketball, we didn't have you know, funds for our own uniforms, and the daughters say, you gotta be kidding me. Right. I mean, you know, that, that can't be, but, but it was. Well, it's a little piece of history <laughs> that you might be surprised to hear. The Big Ten has only recognized women's athletics since 1981. So did she realize what she was doing was historic, or was it, as your title suggests, just the right thing to do? No, they, they knew what they were up against, Susan. Um, when she came here, uh, Participation was encouraged by the Phi Ed Department for Women, but competition was actively discouraged. There was this feeling that for some reason you couldn't possibly have both, you know. And so, so I, I remember talking to, to athletes who played basketball, had a team come up from Illinois, just an intramural type game, and they got yelled at. It was Lathrop Paul on campus. You played a game? You know, so, so they were really up against it back then. Title IX in 1972 was a big deal. It meant funding had to be equal or was supposed to be but it wasn't a panacea because seven years later 1979 the uw women's crew team famously disrobed outside elroy hirsch's office because they still or they changed clothes i should say they they still didn't have a locker room seven years after title nine so, so it was a struggle. So w what was Kit doing before this? How did she come into this role? Well, she came in 64 uh, for grad school here in, in Wisconsin and was going to be in the Phi Ed department and was, taught some classes, but then began, they had a club sport program, which was, you know, not varsity, but she ran that. And then when, in 1974, they uh, made it intercollegiate women's sports, she was the manifest choice to be director. So that was basically her career. Did she uh, have allies in the administration? How difficult was this for her to win hearts and minds? It was difficult because, um, for instance, there was a Title IX lawsuit in 1973, um, right after it, it passed. And, you know, Kit should have been really on board with that, and she was to an extent, but she still had to work within the department. You know, Elroy was her boss. So she had kind of a, a fine line to walk. Her personality was really well suited to that. I remember talking to Alan Fish, interviewing him for my book, and he said something like she had a velvet hammer, if you will. Mm -hmm. You know, she was, she was quite co collegial, but deep down she really knew what she wanted, and she accomplished it. And, and, and the folks you talked to for the book mostly had a favorable opinion of her, I assume. Oh, very much so. Yeah, it was fan. in fact, Mark, it was hard to find a, a folks with a bad word to say about her. Um, w which was great, um, but she, you know, she she got out in 1990, and I remember Peter Tagan, you know, she retired early, 50 years old, and Peter Tagan, the, the wonderful track and, and cross-country coach, said she'd fought some battles. Yeah. She was tired. And she, she She's away. no longer with us, right. unfortunately. Yeah, Kit died a couple of years ago of Alzheimer's. Um, I should mention Buzz Nordine, her husband, who was the one who encouraged me to do the book. Um, and was a wonderful guy himself, and Buzz died too a few years ago. So the book is dedicated to both of their memories. The Right Thing to Do is the name of the book, and Doug will discuss it tomorrow night with Jane Burns at Mystery to Me on Monroe Street. It's at 6 o'clock. The event is free, but I guess it's already sort of full. It is, but you can stream it, live yeah, stream. Live stream on Crowdcast, so that's at 6 o'clock tomorrow. Doug, congratulations on another great book. Good to see you again. Thanks, you What's guys. What's next? You bet. Fred Risser and Mike Leckrone. Oh, oh boy. Uh, Helping both with their autobiographies. <laughs> oh, so. that's incredible. <laughs> Can't wait. Thanks, Doug. See you soon.